Hey guys, this is James Sinclair and this is the Ask James Sinclair Show. Working title, Chudlington. And here we are, we're the stars of Backstage Business, Chudlington over there doing all the recording and editing. And this is our new Q&A show, which is going to be video and podcast, so you can listen to it whilst going around the world. Yep. Driving along Chaddington, flying if that's your thing, or you can watch it here on YouTube, Linky Dink, and Facebook. So everywhere. Everywhere. Well, everywhere. We're even going on Vimeo, maybe. We're not going on Vimeo. So, so basically, this is how it works, right? So every now and then, uh, in backstage business, uh, people reply comments and ask questions for entrepreneurial business advice, uh, and uh, we've been getting quite a few now, uh, especially as our backstage business, uh, which is my daily vlog, grows, uh, and our secrets of success, which is our little mini snippet series. That's all out there. Go and check it out, guys. It's on YouTube, LinkedIn. Uh, what, what, what's, uh, what's, what's the channel? So James Sinclair is the yeah, channel. Yeah, just one. search James Sinclair on YouTube, James Sinclair on LinkedIn. Uh, there we go. Facebook, it's James Sinclair's Entrepreneurs Network. Just search backstage business on the internet and you'll see it. it shouldn't be an issue. So basically, Chavington's going to get all the questions that people send. Uh, they comment on all the videos uh, and, ask, uh, uh, and ask for all this advice. And I'm going to answer the questions. But this is where we're in. It's really exciting. If we think your question is really good, uh, Chavington's going to decide. Uh, we'll have a vote between us. But he'll be the grandmaster. He'll be the head judge in deciding who who will get a one-to-one -one call with me and I'll call you and I'll give you a 20 minute uh, coaching call for absolutely free, 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 uh, if we think your question's really good and it's gonna help other people in their entrepreneurial journey. So, Chudders, uh, let's get on with question number one. You ask and I'll give the question answer. Ooh. Sorry about that. Not getting everything. So this is a comment from Neil O'Brien. Hello, Facebook. Neil. Who's on Facebook? <laughs> What was that? I don't know. Um, so he says, the idea of backstage business is brilliant with so many gems of ideas sprouting from such a short clip. I take this information not Thank only you, from, my, from my business, but from my clients. As for me, I own a chartered cancer business and co-own HR business to- so account? Yeah. Amazing. Uh, accountants watching backstage business. The two will coexist, deliver exceptional value tools for information for SME entrepreneurs. So his question for James. Here's the question. This is the bit we've been waiting for now. He's sucking up to us. <laughs> Given that professional services are becoming increasingly commoditized, then what would be the next step to create a value chain to fold into business that provides advice for SME entrepreneurs? So this is my, my big thing is with accountants, number one, most people really trust their accountants and they don't switch accountants. Uh, you know, they're like solicitors and your doctor, they're people that you trust and you don't want to switch over. But, you know, you can't argue that technology is coming along. There's zero accounting now, for example, which means that people are doing bookkeeping a lot, which, you know, most accountants do bookkeeping for their clients. So what we need to do as an, uh, an accountant is really push your point of difference so that you can become more of a business consultant uh, and advise people on how to you know, make their businesses more profitable rather than just giving tax advice and using your experience. Uh, so that, that might mean that you have less client, clients going forward but higher paying clients that you're more of a mentor, a coach, a business advisor to and sort of explain to your clients that you want to sit as their non-exec director in their business. That is a uh, what, what I think accountants should do, um, and it makes them less commoditized. Then, uh, which was your big question, Hacky? Because you know the basic function of accounting, uh, you know, just one simple thing. You know, you reconciling the bank would have taken. You know, if you've got a big business, reconcile the bank every day. If you've got millions of pounds moving in and out, that would have been a big job. Now, technology has massively improved. You know, where you can just upload a CSV file and match it up to the invoices, etc., etc. That can. You know, that's just one quick example of how technology has you know really taken manpower out so it's about you know pivoting and innovating your business and innovation is absolutely key here in growing a business how can you innovate yourself to become the the better version of accountant the one that gives the good advice uh, that, that can really grow their business talk about things that technology can't do margin uh, how to employ great people and use your experience as an accountant to make sure they understand that well that's what I would be doing anyway how do you think that did Chudlington yeah, I agree. I agree. <laughs> Maybe we'll put a round of applause in for me right now on the answer of that question because we do like sound effects in our I want this to be heavily sound affected. Okay, okay. Okay. Um, so question two. Another comment from Matthew Barker says, Hi James, I'm Magic Matt. Like the title suggests, I'm a magician. Hello, Matthew. 
Barker Magic Matt, welcome to the show. He says, I would love to talk to you about branding and how to get more known within the local area. Great question. I mean, this is not just for children's entertainers, but if you're a local based business and you want to get known in your local area, basically, there's a great book to read uh, from Dan Kennedy, which really explains this is uh, grassroots marketing for local and small businesses. But the, the big piece of advice that I give people, especially how I got known in local areas, make sure you go in for every possible business award that you can go into, make sure you get in the paper as much as possible, and treat your businesses if you're running for mayor or the local council or MP of that town. You know the work that those people go into to get elected in their local town. Maybe you become a councillor, I don't know, but you just make sure that you're really well known in the area for doing stuff. Now, especially if you're a children's entertainer, you're very lucky because you're pitching all the time. So make sure you do the school discos, the nursery. I used to do all those things for free because that gave me opportunity to see 500 people seeing me. And then make sure you've got the marketing collateral for the back end. But it's all about being unusual in a very usual world so that people remember you. Uh, and don't forget that thing. This is really crucial for small businesses in a local area. Make sure the whole town are talking about you. Now, this is easier to do now than any time ever with Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube. You've got to be posting on there on a daily basis, hopefully two or three times a day. But if you're an entertainer and entertainer people, get out there, do local shows, even do them for free. If the local fate's on or, you know, <laughs> make sure you're doing the local fate, you know, and, and uh, that's how I built up my profile. And with my profile, I've been able to open doors. You know, whatever you're doing, you know, if, you, if you're a marketing machine, if you inject profile into it. And I say this all the time, Chaddington, but if you inject profile or brand into a marketing machine, it has 20 times more effect. So what does that mean? If I put on a business event called the James Sinclair Business Event, it'll go so far. If it's called the Richard Branson or the Elon Musk Business Event, it's going to be a hundred <coughs> times more powerful because their brand and profile is bigger than mine at the moment. At the moment. I'm stopping Chaddington. One day we'll be as big as those bad boys. But, you know, I think that, that really hammers home the, the question you've got to be working on it it can't be just an afterthought if you want to be known in your local area make sure you're doing so one of the top things that I used to do is you can write articles in the local newspaper about fun things to do with your kids you know things to do at home that make kids laugh whatever it might be write a vlog write a blog get people to share it the thing is people give up uh, uh, and they don't get immediate results within two three months sometimes it might take you know like with our video and building mine it takes at least a year more like five to really get some traction going hopefully that answers the question let's go for question number three so on YouTube, Tom Pittman said, Hello Tom, welcome to the show. As a newly qualified 21 year old mortgage advisor, I'm surrounded by the stereotypical middle aged, all suited and booted, uptight and intimidating mortgage advisors. My question is, how can I stand out compared to the much, much experienced stereotypical mortgage advisors out there today? Uh, Tom, it, we, we, this is for customers I think, is it? Um, yeah, just to stand out in general, I think. Okay, Tom, a great guy uh, called Gary Das. Uh, he's an Entrepreneurs Network member. He's got some videos out there. He specializes in doing mortgages for the self-employed. Now check him out uh, on any of the platforms online. You'll be able to, one of the things he done, he wrote a book uh, about getting mortgages for self-employed people. Write a book, start writing a vlog, uh, start, start writing a blog, articles and stuff like that. What you want to be doing is promoting that you are an expert of your thing. Don't let age be the barrier to your thing. I've never let age be the barrier, but you've got to promote that you are the expert. How many awards have you won? How often are you talking about those awards? How many articles have you wrote? How many articles have you wrote today? That's the sort of level that you need to go out there. You need to promote yourself as an expert and get yourself out there with sort of testimonial expertise things. So if you've got a vlog out there, if you've got, you know, a hundred videos, that will, you know, when people come, oh yeah, I can see all of these videos, etc., etc. How often can you speak at uh, uh, property events uh, that's really important put a good keynote presentation together and go and speak at those events as soon as you speak it seems like you've got an authority uh, that's really important and also look to create joint venture partnerships with people that are bigger than you so if you can find a, an independent estate agent say look can I be your mortgage advisor once you've got that brand that's uh, bigger than you you can say no I do that brands you know uh, at XYZ estate 
agency in the town, I do all of their stuff. That sort of then builds up your personal brand because you've shared and connected with another um, a bigger brand than you and that immediate elevates you and I've done that time and time again in my life. So that was a very similar answer to the previous question about building profile and positioning yourself as an expert. Yeah, it's big, because you know, uh, the, the, what you said, older people that have been in the game, like you said, the, 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 uh, over a period of time, people know they're an expert. So if they've been a mortgage advisor for 20, 30 years, people know they're an expert. So what you've got to do is try and work out a way of um, how you can expedite your process. Now, when I started out with my entertainment career, within two years, I, you know, I was, I think, one of the busiest in Essex. It took me two years to do, but I did, you know, I went to local events, yeah, like the previous yeah. question, to really promote my expertise and got out there and pitched. Uh, you've got to spend lots and lots of time on marketing yourself as the expert and back it up with articles, videos, vlogs, write a book, you know, check out what Gary Duss has done. Big shout out to Gary Duss, viewer of Backstage Business and Entrepreneurs Network stuff. Good stuff. We've got one more question one more for the question. show. One more, but don't worry, don't worry. Guys, let me just, before we, because in case we forget at the end, if you've got any question about business that you'd like to ask me, comment below wherever you're watching this video, especially on YouTube. They're the ones that we take the most notice of. Uh, LinkedIn and Facebook as well. Comment <coughs> away uh, and we'll get your question answered on the big Q&A show with me, James Sinclair. Right, let's take on question number four, chance. let's go. So, over on LinkedIn, Nick Hilton says, I've been nominated for Young Architect of the Year, three years running, but I'm still struggling to build my client base. Any advice would be grateful, gratefully received. So very much the same as the other guys. Nick, you've won awards. Are you actually telling people you've won awards? That's absolutely crucial, you know. Uh, so I'm just putting up here, I won uh, this uh, video, look at this, here we go, Chuddington. Uh, I'm just, uh, for those listening, I'm just picking up, uh, I won 2017 winner of Rural Entrepreneur of the Awards. Uh, uh, so I was Rural Entrepreneur of the Year for Marsh Farm last year. So what I've got to do with that is you've got to get it out to the press then and tell people you've won the award. Because winning the award only gives you the marketing hook to let others talk about you. Um, and again, I think uh, if you can get to speak at events about uh, why you've, uh, what you believe in your architect stuff, so if you can go to building events or architectural events and speak at any events, I think that will really boost your credibility and expertise, but make sure you really practice your talk so it's an inspiring, entertaining talk, not just not a boring education talk. Uh, one of the smart things to do if you're, if you're ever doing those things, uh, don't stand behind the lectern, get, make sure you've got a lapel mic or a headset mic, use your hands to explain what you want to do and walk around the stage, that'll make you instantly more uh, sort of easier to listen to. But it, you know, you can't just win awards and not tell people you've won awards. If you've, whatever you've done, you've got to do some back-end PR on it and stuff and get it shared. You know, how often have you putting that out on LinkedIn uh, as well, you know, all of those things. Make sure you connect with every architect that you can find on LinkedIn, get them into your community. But then when you've done that, make sure, if you look to my LinkedIn, how many times a day channels do we put content out on LinkedIn? Every day yeah, at least. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. At least once or twice. Yes, at least. Uh, uh, and then we've got articles that back that up. Uh, so it's not just about doing video. Make sure you're doing really good art articles and video. Uh, and we're now, with the, I mean, here what we're doing is we're recording this, uh, Nick. And then we're recording it on, t uh, on camera and we're doing it on audio as well. So we're going to create a podcast out of this and a YouTube video. So the work is out there so that we build up some credibility. And yeah. also... And you want to get I was with you when you uh, when you won the award. So yes. um, I made sure that I got every photo opportunity of you with the awards. Yes. That then went on every all of your social platforms. We vlogged yeah. the thing anyway. So if you want to check out an episode of Backstage Business, where so basically my point is that every, it wasn't you just collecting an award. Yeah. Like I tripled down on every social media just to make sure everyone knew that you were a real entrepreneur of the year. Yeah. So you see, you see, you know, it's, not it's, just, it's so easy. Yes. Like it took. Tens of seconds on my phone just to post that. 100%. Just, do you know what I mean? So, so there we go, guys. This has been the big James Sinclair Q&A. Uh, pick a winner. Pick a winner. Who, okay, Chudders, yeah, who are we going to choose as the winner? Can to you get? think of any out of those four questions? Can you remember? Struck. I think, do you know, I think that was all good. Who um, do you think you can deliver the most value for? I think I can deliver all of them the most value. I think, I think Tom, 
he's 21 years old. A comment on YouTube, Tom Pittman. And he's commented on YouTube, he's a mortgage advisor. Do you know what? Let's get in chat with him and we're going to give Tom, you, Tom Pittman. Six days ago he asked us a question, you're the winner, you're going to get a 20 minute one to one call with me and we're going to make that happen, we're going to private message you. Thanks I'll very much. Touch. I'll get in touch with you, I'll get your details and get that lined up. And we'll be back uh, next week with another four questions to ask in the Q&A show. But if you want your questions asked and me answering them, don't forget, comment on any of our videos, uh, especially on Backstage Business, um, or even on this video when it comes out. And we will answer them in the next show. Thanks for listening, guys. See ya. Bye-bye. See ya.